Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host. I'm the co-host and the noob, Caliban, and what day is it? What time is it? I don't know. I'm ready to do some Sailor Noob. <laughs> We're a couple of magical people ready to moon eternal make up this episode. Today we are talking about episode number 169, Noroi no Makyo, Akumu ni Torarareta Mamoru in Japanese, and the English translation, The Cursed Mirror, Mamoru Caught in a Nightmare, and the German title, Nehelenia Rash, or Nehelenia's Revenge. Ooh, Rash. Rash. Yes. yes. The Revenge. Yes. Nehelenia Strikes Back. That's right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so we had two German titles in a row, but you know what? They're 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 unique. So yeah, the Germans are killing it. They are. Uh, all right, good. Yeah, her revenge. Yeah, she's getting her revenge. All right. I'll talk about it later. Um, <laughs> uh, full disclosure. Uh, I don't feel great. I got the vax, 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 vax. <laughs> And so I don't I don't feel well, and I have uh, done uh, about four fingers in Nyquil. So we'll oh see uh, where this ends up. Maybe on the roof uh, with no shirt, but uh, <laughs> I'm 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 here, and I'm holding it down for the Sailor Noob fans out there. Well, thank you for making a sacrifice for us. I, mean, I hope that it makes sense. I think it will. No guarantees and no refunds. I'm vaccinated. I got. Uh, the flu and the COVID shot at the same time in the same arm for do, some reason. Do, don't do that. Do you yeah. get the, so have you gotten like, I don't know what the, if there is a schedule now or what they expect from you. I just know I went to the doctor cause I wasn't feeling good for something else. And they're like, do you want the COVID? And I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. I guess I'll just take that. Yeah. Right. Stupid. <laughs> Because, you know, a day later, you're like, it's, it's why you gave me COVID. <laughs> I, but this is supposed to protect me from COVID. Right. It feels like COVID. I haven't gotten sick from the, the vaccines knocking on wood. Not um, at all? Not at all. Uh, yeah. The last time I, well, let's see. Oh, God, it, this is like a part of our history we all just kind of want to forget, isn't it? Yeah. It do, And it doesn't, I feel like unconsciously i do that because i don't remember all this very well but i know there was like th the th there's three right in the first sort of push yes. while we were going through it there were yes. like three different things and like the th third one or was it the first one i can't remember which one it was but one of them like i got a a lymph node that got yes. really swollen i remember that in my armpit yeah and i was like uh oh, I mean, this is probably just like a reaction, but like, right. this is, and I had to go have it looked at and everything like that. And they were like, I think it's, you're probably okay. Yeah. You're probably okay. But that was like a big to do and everything. And so I'm not, I don't be the guy that says, don't get vaccinated. But no. at the same time, you know, give me a lollipop or something. <laughs> Did you get a sticker? I get nothing. No, oh. I didn't get any sticker. I, I've gotten stickers before. Like, I got the flu shot or something like that. That's where you get your stickers. Yeah. I get my stickers here. <laughs> for knowing Sailor Moon things. Yes. Do I, is it, do I get them for knowing things? I feel like you get it for knowing things or um, guessing things correctly or huh. or just good behavior. Good behavior. <laughs> good hygiene. Yeah, there you go. Well, speaking of stickers... Uh, I'm going to set something up and we'll get to the sticker part in a little bit. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, on our Spotify, uh, page, or I guess on every episode of our show on Spotify, a section called, what did you think about this episode? Where you as a Spotify listener, either on your device or your computer can go to our episode and answer the question that we ask, what do you think about this episode? And, uh, for last episode, episode 168, Saturn Awakens, the 10 Sailor Guardians Unite, User Cosmic Rain says, uh, Cal, would love to tell you how much longer you have with Nihalania, but spoilers, you know, I'll just remind you the Makai Tree arc in R was 13 episodes. Work with that. Mika, he deserves a sticker. <laughs> you do deserve a sticker. I do. I deserve a whole stack of them. If this is going to go for 13 episodes, it's going to Cosmic Green, what do you know? <laughs> Tell me what you know. 
All right, I'm going to sit with that. Thanks for your comment. Uh, listener Cincy Raz says, there's a total solar eclipse in the Midwest this week. There's also a circus coming to town. I hear the sounds of bell chimes when I sleep. Please send help. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I do look at a eclipse. Well, I don't look at eclipses, but uh, I think about eclipses differently uh, after having seen uh, some of these episodes. Yes. Uh, thanks for your comment. And listener Fandom Casual says... Horror blue balls was my favorite description of this entire episode. Reminds me of, oh, I know this. Okay. Reminds me of, what is this? A tea party? Somebody kill somebody. What? (laughs) That's from the Simpsons. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. uh, Yeah. Well, bad news about today's episode. Uh, But uh, yeah, horror blue balls. Uh, Put that in the book. And thanks for your comment, fandom. Uh, If you want to comment on our episodes and tell us, What'd you think about this episode? Go to your Spotify app or Spotify on your computer and answer our little question. I'm We're now, waiting for you. That's right. I'm now listening to my podcasts on Spotify because Google Podcasts is no more. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yes. Like everything that I have to do, uh, I'm way behind on that. And so I am um, transferring all the stuff from the Google Podcasts to the Noogle podcast. It's like... And the things, the um, YouTube music. YouTube music, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I figured, I just figured that we were on there because I haven't checked. Right. Uh, but we're not. No. At least not in any way that is searchable. And so I have to transfer those. And I, I have yet to do that. But if you are a Google podcast listener, uh, I hope you find a new solution. I mean, if you're planning on listening on YouTube, we, they are published on our YouTube page. Sure. I know that that's not the same as like listening through a app or whatever, but if you go, right. you know, on your phone or comp- computer to YouTube to the Just Enough Trope channel, you know, all of our uh, network podcast episodes are on there. Okay, so, sure. So um, if you are a former Google Podcast user, uh, use that for now. Uh, in a week or so, we'll have uh, all our shows on there. Awesome. Sounds good. So, Cal, can you tell us what happens on today's episode? I can't. You can't. No. How come? Because does anything happen in today's episode? Great question. You know, listening to the words of Cosmic Rain made me think um, I should do a little research. Okay. But carefully. Yeah. Carefully. (laughs) And what I learned was that Stars was three volumes and ten chapters or acts. Yes. Now, out of 60 acts, that's, and I think I have my math right, (laughs) one-sixth of the saga. Yes. A saga in which there are ostensibly five overarching arcs or acts. Yes, correct. That means there's less. There isn't much here. Right. So if we're taking Cosmic Rain at face value, the Mackay Tree was 13 episodes there's no way there's no way because if you took there's 34 episodes in sailor moon stars if you take 13 episodes or like 12 13 that's four two to carry the one that's a lot it's almost half <laughs> yeah it's yeah. not half but it's yeah, over a third yeah there would be no is there what's the story in stars then it would be so short it would be i mean it's already short but what? I just don't, I don't like the fact, the only way to find out is to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like this advent calendar has gotten really weird. There was like a buzzing coming from behind one of those things. I pulled one <laughs> of the things up the other day. Blood just ran out of it. Oh my God. Like I'm I'm scared to open the, the following doors, the upcoming doors on this advent calendar to get to the 25th or whatever. Is there something bigger in the 25th? That's a good question. We never really, my family's cheap. We never did. We, I guess we don't have money for Advent. We all know how expensive Advent calendars are. <laughs> um, we had some, but it was just always, always like the waxy chocolate, you know, like it wasn't like super fancy chocolate. Plus, how do, what do you do if you've got more than one kid? There's just like one piece of chocolate in there. You get more than one Advent calendar. Is oh, what you okay. Do. Yeah, that makes sense. I yeah. Suppose. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Big spender. Yeah. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> Well, it's not like... When we sat in our mansion and thought, we have it pretty good, don't we? It's not like he had a Lindor advent calendar or a Godiva. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, It was, you know, cheap chocolate, so... 
All right. Well, anyway, speaking of cheap, uh, let's get into it. Uh, the episode opens with a brief little teaser where we see people all over the city looking into their mirrors and saying, who is the most beautiful of them all? You are. It's you. <laughs> you. At least I think they're different people. They picked a bunch of characters that all look the same. They're mostly girls with like long auburn hair. Yeah. This is where you like do the ponytail, uh, two pigtails, the bob. Yes. You know, mix it up the styles and colors, differentiate these characters. They all look the same. Maybe show a dog. It's a dog just looking in the mirror. Look at boy. You are. <laughs> at the Tenno Kayo Mayo Tomoe household, the news is on and the news is bad. There's an illness affecting young girls where they experience weakness and fatigue when waking up in the morning. And haven't you just diagnosed these girls with teenagerism? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if their heads were spinning around and they were reciting the Lord's Prayer backward, we might have something. But <laughs> turns out that teenagers don't like getting up in the morning. Shocker. Call the CDC. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's being called the Modern Day Unknown Disease, or MDUD. <laughs> And watching this, Hotaru says, A shadow of darkness covering the white moon, the one with shining golden hair, is approached by an evil desire. Shining golden hair? Yeah. Oh, no. Look out, Monaco! <laughs> Haruka says, This all seems too coincidental. And Hotaru says, A mirror. Which, I know she has, like, precognitive abilities, but no one was talking about a mirror. No. You're right. Not the news guy, not the outers. Nobody said anything. Uh -uh. And she's just like, uh, we got to move the plot forward. So <laughs> mirror. <laughs> secret word, secret the word. Secret word is mirror. <laughs> That's your clue for today, mirror. Uh, Michiru says the true nature of the incident before also involved mirrors. And she looks into her own hand mirror, the symbol of her power. In the mirror, she is shocked to see a brief flash of Mamoru with a dark, Wavy silhouette behind him. Mm -hmm. At Jabon High School. Oh, right. oh so many firsts. <laughs> Monaco and Usagi are tearing up the stairs because they're both going to be late. Oh, first time late to high school. I know. Also, this show cannot help itself. No. So it's got to be these two together. Of course. Uh, as they run, Usagi says, Aw, GBUs is going to make fun of us for being high schoolers and still being late. She's not here. She's, getting, no, she's not she's going to be not. a teacher, is she? <laughs> How's she going to know about this? <laughs> Sensei Chibiusa. Aw, yeah. my nine-year-old so emotionally abusive to me. <laughs> As they ascend another flight, they see a student looking into a mirror above a sink. And can I ask, how did Japan school work? What why, do you is mean? There, why is there a hand-washing sink on the landing of, let's say, the third floor of this high school? It's probably like right outside the bathroom. Like where the, the toilets are, is my guess. But they're going, okay, I guess they take a left. So to the right would be the bathroom, and that would be like the corner yeah. of the school, right? Yeah. There's no, okay, all right, I guess. Which is like right there. I yeah. mean, I didn't see anything like this in Ghostwire Tokyo. No. <laughs> which is where I get all my high school. Uh, architecture uh, and layout information. There are file. a lot of high schools in that. Uh, Usagi yells at this student, you don't have time to look in a mirror. The bell stopped ringing. And Menako starts to drag her away saying, you don't have time to worry about anybody else. And as we leave, we focus in on this kid's face and he has a golden eye. <laughs> So MDUD does not just affect girls. Correct. Although he does have auburn hair. That's kind of long. Yeah. Yeah. In the classroom, Makoto and Ami hear the pounding of Buster Browns in the hall outside. And Makoto says, that sounds like an Ami who is wearing her brainy specs. Now she can be respected for being smart. She doesn't have to pretend anymore. This is, <laughs> this is high school. <laughs> She's sophisticated. That's right. Uh, she says, it must be usagi John and monaco John." And they go out into the hall and Monaco and Usagi skid to a stop in front of them, both saying, it's dangerous to pop out of nowhere like that because this show cannot help itself. Yes. Mako says, can't you wake up a little earlier in the morning? <laughs> Do you guys have MDUD? <laughs> and Usagi's like, yeah, yeah, you know, we got to go into the class. So but Mako says, well, first period is actually study hall. 
and Ami says, the teachers are in the teacher's lounge for an emergency meeting. Somebody bring a rum cake or something? Oh, my God. Usagi and Mina, goes on in that teacher's lounge? <laughs> Usagi and Mina are like, a meeting to discuss punishments for late students? <laughs> but Ami says, no, it's because there have been so many absences, especially, but not strictly, among the girls. Yeah. So exacting. It's so weird. Seriously, though, uh, if this is some kind of lateness, like can't get, get up in the morning sickness, isn't Usagi like... The prime suspect for patient zero. She is. Yes, for sure. <laughs> She's like the typhoid Mary of this thing. Yeah, she is. They got the guys from E.T. out here wrapping her in plastic. <laughs> Usagi says, is there a flu going around? But Ami says, no, there's an overwhelming number of people that get up in the morning and don't have energy to come to school. It's called teenagers. I know, right? <laughs> what are they trying to say here? And we see another two auburn haired girls. Dude, am I missing something? No. Was there a sale on brown paint? You, you know, this is a really good point. Like, I didn't recognize that it was just mostly people with brown hair, but like, why I know did that they we can't give. It? I know that we can't give people who aren't our main characters cool purple hair or anime hair. You gotta have purple <laughs> hair. Red hair, brown eyes. Cause God, we're out of crayons. We got to the bathroom, the girls' bathroom, and it's our first high school girls' bathroom scene. That 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 sounds worse than it is. <laughs> I mean, the classic, you know, the girls are all in the bathroom together. Right. right. It's, it's a thing in a high school show. Of course. You know, Makoto lights up a cigarette. Usagi's banging on the tampon dispenser. <laughs> Manako's doing a third coat of lip gloss in the mirror. <laughs> I don't know why they're all the pink ladies all of a sudden. <laughs> it seems to work. Sailor Skibon. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> the girls are talking about the rash of lasonings that have been going around. And Manako says, I saw that on the news this morning. <laughs> Marako probably watches CBS Sunday morning. Yeah, I could see that. She's an old lady. She is an old lady. In a young girl's body. (laughs) And Ami says, uh, if you have time to watch the news in the morning, dot, dot, dot. (laughs) The girls leave the bathroom, and as they enter the hall, Mako stops short when she sees something, and Usagi runs into her from behind. And Mako says, is that girl acting weird? We see a brown-haired girl. I know. (laughs) Looking into her makeup compact. And Usagi says, I'll handle this. She walks over to her (laughs) and she says, "Uh, what's up? You're really looking into that mirror. I know. The girl doesn't respond. And Usagi says, "Uh, this mirror is is different from other mirrors? Is that what I'm getting here? (laughs) But again, the girl says nothing. Well, if she's not going to say anything, I certainly can't help her. Usagi grabs the mirror from her and says... Okay, well, let me see this here. Uh, yeah, no, it looks like a looks like a regular mirror. But as she continues to look, a dark cloud seems to emerge from the compact. And Usagi stands dumbfounded, continuing to look straight into it. And Mako runs over and knocks it out of her hand. And the compact goes spitting to the floor when the mirror cracks. Yeah. Hey, bitch, that's my Selena Gomez muted peach. <laughs> You're going to pay for that. <laughs> Everyone just pauses for a beat. And Mako says... Sorry, I, I saw a, a strange power coming out of it. and I, uh, But the brown-haired girl falls to her knees in front of the broken mirror, devastated. You're going to pay me back for that, skank? <laughs> Mako says, uh, you can use my mirror here, and tries to hand her her own compact. But the girl is fascinated by the shards of her mirror on the floor, saying, if the mirror is broken, how can I live from now on? Yeah. The squad like. is weirded out. Yeah, it's a little much. As Mina says, isn't she overreacting? <laughs> <laughs> I love that she said that, too. Couldn't do it without you, Mina. As Usagi stares at this forlorn girl, she sees the girl's eye flash gold. And she remembers how Mamoru's eye had the same glimmer. Ami says, uh, you okay, Usagi? And Usagi says, uh, yeah. Say something, Usagi! <laughs> I know. You, you, you're you about to put it... Somebody smarter than you can put it together. You've almost <laughs> put it together. Usagi looks at this girl and thinks... <laughs> so instead, Usagi looks at this girl and thinks, is Mamoru cheating on me with this girl? Oh, my God. Yeah, everything's about... <laughs> Some gold eye based infidelity? Oh did they God. get that gold put in their eyes together at the mall? I know they did. <laughs> no, she says, I'll have to see for myself to make sure. At Mamoru's pad, Mamoru is putting up a brand new mirror when the doorbell rings and we hear a voice say, Jiva-senpai, are you here? 
We pull out and we see that there are mirrors everywhere in the pad. It's more yeah. mirror than apartment now. <laughs> there is uh, 6,378 years of bad potential bad luck in there. Yes. Hope you didn't overpay for those. <laughs> Who's this mirror guy? Great question. Outside in the hall, we see Mamoru's classmate ring the bell again and say, uh, you said we meet together today for past two. What's past two? I don't. What's past two, precious? I, I don't know. What is past two? I don't know. He says past two. Does he mean Uh-oh. we're going to meet past two? It's time for a translation rewind <laughs> to find out what the hell they're talking about. In the Viz sub, available for free on YouTube, this little kid whose name we never find out, although I'll point out that he has kind of auburn hair. <laughs> <sighs> kind of blondish auburn, yeah. It, it's not blonde. Uh, he says, we're supposed to go to that offline gathering today, remember? Offline? That's weird, too. What? Like, in real life? We have no IRL? Where, we have no... Yeah, this is 1997. Nobody knows what that means. It's 1996. Nobody knows what that means. I know. We have, this, is, this is it. We have nowhere to go after this. <laughs> Unless we go to the to the German dub? <laughs> <laughs> Pull it up. I'll try to translate it. Okay, right. Uh, I know. And anyway, whatever. It's just some classmate of his. Uh, we don't know who it is. We'll never see this. We'll never see this guy again. So it doesn't really matter. I, I have more on it, but I'll tell you later. Oh! That's a teaser. <laughs> you can just tell me now. Look, I, here's my theory about the hair, all right? Uh, look, we, we budgeted this amount of paint for Naru and Amino, but they're not in the show anymore. So start making brown-haired characters. Come on. <laughs> this can's just going to sit here in the corner of the studio <laughs> until we're done. Oh, my gosh. We've got to use it all. Who's that? Brown! Eventually, he gives up and starts to walk away. And from the other end of the hall, we see Usagi creeping up to the door. And she says, who is that guy? And why was he here? And what's past two? <laughs> she goes up and rings the doorbell herself, like over and over like you would expect her to. Yes, yes. <laughs> ding, a ding, a ding, a ding. She says to herself, yeah, it seems like he's out. But this Usagi is not the type who gives up easily. She starts rummaging in her pockets and she says... I have a symbol of our love, which he gave me, a spare key. (laughs) Ah, yes, the engagement ring of the 21st century. Yes, there you go. That's a big step when you're dating a high schooler. (laughs) Oh, my God. (sighs) I mean, they're so irresponsible. What if they lose it? I mean, that would be something to worry about. (laughs) Uh, She lifts the key triumphantly and then says, who am I showing off for anyway? (laughs) Let's not. Come, come on, on. show. We only got 30 episodes or so left. We can't start <laughs> questioning that now. Uh, inside, it's dark, and Usagi thinks, did he go out? He did say he wasn't feeling well. And uh, there's an awful lot of mirrors in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you mean to put these in the bedroom? I'm trying to figure out the... <laughs> nothing? Okay. I'm trying to figure out the layout. Oh, of his... <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the... <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the layout of his place because it always looked like he slept in the main room. Yeah. Which is weird because he's a rich guy and I think this is supposed to be a big place. But like his desk and couch and bed are all that scream studio to me. Yeah. But he's got like multiple rooms. He has multiple rooms. And they took care of a baby that one time. Yes, Remember that's right. Remember it pissed face? Yes. Uh, so like I can't figure out what this place looks like. Uh yeah, whatever you see him in bed, he's uh, he's in that main room. Yeah, but he's always sick. He's Maybe not it's a sick well. bed. <laughs> he's got he's... a he's got a master bed, day bed, sick bed. There you go. Yeah, that's that's what he does. Uh, but there's another room in the back. Uh, maybe it's the second bedroom. And Usagi pulls back the door and sees Mamoru standing in front of a full length mirror, gazing into it in rapture. As she cautiously approaches him, she sees in the mirror. His eye flash gold again. And in the mirror, a dark wavy silhouette seems to engulf his reflection. Usagi shouts, Mamo-chan! And takes a step forward, but inadvertently steps on a mirror on the floor, cracking it. Mm-hmm. Wow! Now she steps on this mirror. If that mirror itself was on top of a crack, that's that's some, that's extra bad luck. That's a <laughs> catastrophic step luck. On a crack, yeah, that's a force multiplier back. of bad luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Uh, and that one's not going back to deck the walls, that's for sure. <laughs> you bought that one. Momoro turns around angrily and says, Who is it? Why are you here? 
Usagi says, uh, there was a guy at your door just now. But Mamoru says, how could you come into somebody's apartment without asking? You're not a mirror. Get out of here. <laughs> and she says, I was worried about you. And he says, you don't have to worry. And he kneels down by the cracked mirror and says, what a pity. And he runs his hand over the mirror. It's so weird. <laughs> oh, you're so smooth. In, in my in my version, the Viz version, it says, he's like, oh, poor thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll creepy. Get some, let's get you some mirror chow. You'll feel better. <laughs> and he cuts his finger on the sharp glass. Usagi tries to grab his hand, but he knocks hers away and says, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I haven't been feeling well. Uh, I think it's M-D-U-D. <laughs> That's what he gets for sleeping with a high schooler. Oh, my God. <sighs> oh, my God. Weird. He says, I'm just tired. Let me sleep. Usagi says, sure. That's what you need. I asked Mama to make you lunch. You need your vitamins. I'll put it in the kitchen. And he says, yeah. <laughs> Usagi says, sorry about breaking the mirror. And he says, yeah. <laughs> she says, call me when you feel better. And he says, all right. As Usagi goes, she looks back to see him once again, staring into the mirror. That's another benefit of dating a high schooler, you know, mom's lunches. Oh, my God. Get those all the time. <laughs> <sighs> Didn't we do this already? With with Mamoru? I'm having, speaking of mirrors, uh, this is a reflection of the last episode. Yeah, you're right. It's like the same thing. It's the same beats. You guys lied to me. What do you mean? Oh, still, stars is good. Don't worry about it. You'll get to it. Oh, boy, you're going to love stars. (laughs) Is this on purpose? Where's Jamie Kennedy? Bring him out. (laughs) Come on. Let me remember that. No. You know Jamie Kennedy? You know who Jamie Kennedy is? I don't know if I do. He's like when you order Seth Green on Wish. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this arc is is not all of stars. How do I say things without saying I things? I'm not happy about anything. Uh, I catch it 10 minutes, by the way. Yeah, all which right. is early. Yeah. Let's take an early break before we go back to nothing. <laughs> The next morning at Hakawa Shrine, Usagi is relating to the squad and Chibi what happened at Mamoru's place and how he's glued to that mirror. Mm -hmm. Chibi said, could it be this illness that everybody's talking about? (laughs) M-D-U-D? Chibi watches CNN. She's paying attention. That's right. She reads the paper. (laughs) Ami says, it's most prevalent among young girls, but they said that men are also getting it. Beautiful, beautiful men. Uh, we should we should double check. <laughs> They're going to go back again? We did this already. I know. She was already there. I know. Usagi jumps up and says, how can it be cured? And Mako says, they said that no treatment has had an effect. Has anybody tried some French toast and a Bloody Mary? <laughs> that usually gets me up and going around 1 p.m. on the weekend. <laughs> oh, right? my God. As the girls fret over this, Ray thinks back to that time that her mirror freaked out and the time that they faced a bunch of mirror women. Yeah. But, you know, probably unrelated. (laughs) Mina says, what, Ray? And Ray says, you guys, I think this might have to do with mirrors. (laughs) My protection mirror? Those mirror dollies? The last bad guy we fought who lived inside a mirror in the huge mirror maze we went through where we fought ourselves coming out of mirrors in the previous 39 episodes where people were having their mirrors pulled out? I mean, am I crazy here? Oh, my God. (laughs) The girls all agree that it's possible that mirrors might be involved. And Mako says that this could be the crisis that the outers were talking about. It could be. But we'll see. We have to double check. (laughs) We hear a voice say... A shadow of darkness covering the white moon. The one with shining golden hair is approached by an evil desire. This is all she says. Does this she is even... all she says. Yeah, she's somebody repeating Somebody said herself. in the Discord today that like, oh, um, somebody online uh, sort of preferred an idea that maybe Ami was like on the spectrum. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Hatara's on the spectrum, right? We all agree on this. I think so. <laughs> That's yeah. my vote. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well. We'll have the debate, I'm sure, online. The girls turn to see Hotaru and Setsuna standing in the courtyard of the temple. 
I think Hotaru is taking well to her creepy lessons. Yes. She's she's a fast learner. <laughs> They're going to practice the Wednesday dance later. Oh, my God. Hotaru says, I don't know for sure, but something dark is drawing near. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you be more vague? You think? <laughs> Chibi's like, uh, what's up now? Uh, I miss today's Anderson Cooper. And Mako <laughs> says, uh, someone doesn't like Sailor Moon and wants to do something bad. Is she talking down to Chibi? Kind of sounds like it. <laughs> Chibi's the one who came in like, hey, you guys, <laughs> something's wrong here. Should we be talking about mirrors? Uh, yeah. So, somebody doesn't like Sailor Moon, but you're okay. Okay, here's a piece of candy. <laughs> Saved your ass more than once. Hotaru says, all I know is that something is beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's taking its sweet ass time to begin. Yeah. It's been beginning for three episodes. <laughs> Hotaru also says, on the other hand, something is ending. <laughs> oh, my God. Maybe oh, my God. It may be, and it may not be. <laughs> what is the sound of one hand farting? Oh, my God. Then it will begin to walk the path to destruction. Wednesday dance. <clears throat> we just cut. To the Sailor Senshi running, we're going to do the rest in a montage. Yeah. Uh, you deserve it. Because it's just so boring. Uh, Setsuna says in VO, when Hotaru sensed the darkness was coming, she was awoken as Sailor Saturn once more. You know anybody who's looking for a crib? Maybe a car seat? I got a bunch of boxes of diapers. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sailor Moon thinks to herself, that's why I became Eternal Sailor Moon? And Otaru says, on the night of the falling stars, I had a vision where all the mirrors in the city were affected by darkness. I was shaken with terror, but I knew what I must do. Explain the last two episodes? Yeah, really. That's all you're doing? <laughs> Ray decides that she'll help with this retroactive exposition. And she says, the reason my mirror was acting strangely. And Ami joins in too and says, and the reason for MDUD. And Otaru <laughs> says, it's because of the power of darkness in those mirrors. Satuna says, do not look into mirrors carelessly or you may be caught by the power of darkness. Now, wait. First thing. Well, first thing. Is this some kind of cheesy, don't be too vain girls message from the show? It the might The show be. that screamed make up for four years at us? <laughs> Moon hypocrisy action. <laughs> but also, I thought it was like the shards that were getting in people's eyes. I think it is the shards that are getting in people's but eyes. But they're just saying, oh, if you look in the mirror, that's... They know. don't know. But shouldn't they know, though? They should. Yeah. Yeah. Does everybody have a shard in their eye? Was there a shard for every person in Tokyo? Um, It's possible, but I don't think all of them went into people's eyes, you know? And that's with go in their butts. <laughs> well, one golden hit... butt. Oh my god! Uh, one of them hit Haruka in the finger or the gold, hand. <laughs> gold finger. <laughs> Set me up for that. Well, the show doesn't care. Uh, it's it's not done just recapping everything that's happened in the last two episodes. And Uzagi says, "So Mamoru has been captured by the dark mirrors." Yes, yes. <laughs> I saw a dark shadow in Mamo's mirror. And also, a raven flew away from my window last episode. Yeah. So I told you that'd be important. Yes. Setsuna says, Haruka and Michiru already went ahead. We have to hurry. Went ahead where? You're just montaging to, to the next place. Yeah. I guess they're going to go to Mamoru's. I think so. Yeah. All right. So anyway, they cut to wherever that is as Sailor Uranus is doing a space sword blaster and blowing up mirror dollies. We see Uranus and Sailor Neptune standing back to back, surrounded by foes. And Neptune says, I've been thinking that just once, I wish my instincts weren't right. And Uranus says, well, it's better than sitting around being bored all day. Yeah, but the audience is bored. <laughs> Neptune says, oh, are you saying I'm boring? Stop being cute. Just move the story forward. She yells, submarine reflection. And holds her mirror up, and all the glass dollies shatter, but still more begin to reform. But like a lot less. Like yeah, four. Right. It's not that tense a situation, but what the hell? We get a dead scream from off screen that destroys the last few dollies. The inner senshi, Chibi Moon, Sailor Saturn, and Sailor Pluto have arrived. 
Saturn and Pluto join Neptune and Uranus, and Pluto tells Sailor Moon, keep heading for where the prince is. We got this, as more dollies begin to form out of the ground. So I guess we're at Memorial's building, though an establishing shot would have been nice. Yeah. And the Senshi are standing in front of the elevator. <laughs> Sailor Moon jabs the button furiously, as you know that Usagi would. Just... <laughs> uh, this is an emergency. Shouldn't you be using the stairs? Yes. Yeah, come on. Absolutely. See them going up 20 flights like the Ghostbusters? <laughs> you know? I think we're in the, the teens somewhere. But when we get to 20, tell me. I'm going to throw up. The elevator finally reaches the first floor, and as the doors open, a dolly jumps out and slashes at them! Jupiter reacts quickly with an oak evolution and destroys the dolly, and she says, Okay, let's take the stairs! <laughs> <laughs> Sailor Venus says, Time to show off the legs that I've been giving special training every day. <laughs> yeah! Slay Queen! <laughs> Jupiter says, Special training? And Venus says, yeah, you know what? Forget about it. Never mind. Let's go. <laughs> what? Because you're running in late all the time. So they're running up the stairs late. That's what it is? That's the training. Yeah. I, I don't think so. You don't think so? Isn't she doing like her dancing and singing practice or something? Yeah, but I think... I thought she was doing like high kicks or something. Oh, I thought it... I just took it as like they, they run up the stairs all the time and that that was her training. Is this the first day of school? How is she doing it every day then? They've just started. They they've been going for like at least since the beginning of the season, so maybe a couple <laughs> days. Two so two episodes ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the training really pays off. Okay. This all is right. a short program of training, but you're going to see gains immediately. <laughs> Time to take some more of this creatine. <laughs> oh my Let's gosh. Kill these guys. <clears throat> As the girls run up the stairs, Usagi sees a flash of the dark shape in the mirror once again. And stops mid-flight. Sailor Mars says, hey, w w what are you waiting for? Sailor Moon says, that dark shape I saw before. I just remembered. <laughs> it's Mehelania! <laughs> the girls, and only the girls, are shocked at this revelation. Yes. And as they continue up the stairs, they question how Nehalania could have escaped from her prison in the new moon. We knew nothing about this. How could it have changed? <laughs> we just said, uh, you know, a lady goes into a new moon and you figure, we're not going to see her again. And she's back. <laughs> this is crazy. Chibi's not worried, though. Parachute. Pats her back. Not getting her twice. She sleeps in that thing now. Yeah. Forget about it. As the Senshi reach Mamoru's floor and dash inside his apartment, we see that the entire space is redly lit. And it's completely covered in mirrors. I don't know if they're like covering like the furniture and like doors to other rooms or if somehow evil like magic it. has turned this into like a loft space or something like that. Because it <laughs> seems it's just a room now. It's not even an apartment anymore. No, you're right. But it's kind of weird. Uh, Mamoru gazes into one of the mirrors and says, when I gaze into the mirrors, I feel at peace. Uh, the, the, the. <laughs> And we see his eye glow golden once again. Sailor Moon runs up and says, Please stop gazing into mirrors like that. But he says, Shut up! And he smacks her, smacks her right to the ground. But, you know, with the amount of time that things like that happen, you think that she'd learn some self-defense moves? Yeah, that'd be good. You know, next time your boyfriend gets possessed, Uh-oh, not this time. <laughs> I've been doing some so a wax on, wax off type thing. Yes. Boom, take that. No. <laughs> Flip him over. Chibi runs to Sailor Moon's side and chides Mamoru, saying, How terrible! Pushing her around like that! Hey, listen! But, <laughs> but Mamoru just returns to the mirror. And as he leans against it, the Senshi see a dark shape in its glass that resolves into the form of Nihalania. Yep. As the outers arrive, Nihalania says, Queen of the White Moon, did you have an enjoyable morning? Oh, well, you know, I had a little coffee, a croissant... <laughs> took a bath, organized my manga a little bit. You know, the usual. Now Helenia says, When I was sealed in that cold darkness, you were living in the outside world, laughing at me, surrounded by the people you love, in the rays of the sun, your golden hair fluttering in the wind, your heaving bosom, and your cult-like legs. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> like, she's like, uh, do you know this girl at all? 
Yeah. She was on her butt, eating bon bons, yeah. reading manga. <laughs> She's like, I know that you were doing all this stuff yeah. in your sundress. It's, it's weird. It's very strange. Uh, I know there's a lot of there's a lot of things happening here uh, that are crossing over each other. Usagi says, I would never laugh at you, but Nehalania says, Silence! I will guide everything you love into destruction. Like this. And she reaches her hand out through the mirror and begins drawing Mamoru into it. Yeah. Sailor Moon yells, no, stop, and runs towards the mirror. But she just bounces off the mirror as Mamoru has been drawn completely inside. We get a Mars Flame Sniper and a Mercury Aqua Rhapsody, which meet the mirror and dissipate. Because fire and water just make steam. Idiots, idiots. <laughs> That's not a good combination. But they do nothing. Inside the mirror, clutching Mamoru, Nehalania says, My power of darkness is unaffected by your child's play. Sailor Moon stands up and says, everyone, pray with me. <laughs> everyone, give me your power. And one by one, each senshi empowers Sailor Moon with the energy of their guardian planet. We skip the foreheads this time. <laughs> Sailor Moon calls, Moon Eternal Makeup! And becomes Eternal Sailor Moon. But Nehalania is like, meh, and raises her hand causing an army of dollies to emerge from the surrounding mirrors. But Sailor Moon holds her scepter aloft, and the light from it shatters the crystalline foes. She says, please return Mamo-chan. But almost immediately, she begins to revert back to regular Sailor Moon, or Super Sailor Moon. I have lost track of the Sailor Moons at this point. As Super she fall- Sailor Moon, you, saw, you got it. All right. As she falls to her knees, Nihalania sneers and says, Look well, the man that you love is now in my embrace. I'm the Jolene. <laughs> right? Yes. She's got, no, Jolene had, uh, Jolene had auburn hair. Oh, my God. <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> now, Helenia says, look upon the sadness, the hatred, the depression of this world, the lazy anime writers. <laughs> And laughing raucously, she turns and walks into the mirror, and Sailor Moon cries after Mamoru. Not one to let a twist of the knife go by, Nehalania turns back and says, Useless! Because of my curse, this man's heart is in the grip of nightmares. He can no longer hear your voice. By dawn, this man's heart will be in my control. Can you reach me before then, Sailor Moon? And laughing once again, she walks away, and the image of Nehalania and the captive Mamoru disappears from the mirror. Usagi runs to the mirror, screaming Mamoru's name and pounding her fists uselessly on the surface of the mirror. You guys lied to me. How? You lied. How did we lie? How is this good? Okay, so this isn't like the best part. They're lying to us. <laughs> um, no, it is not. You're right. That that's no lies there. Yeah, that's no lie. Yeah. Uh, it's not even, and it's also, and look, uh, I might not be a sailor expert, but I'm a sailor expert in uh, watching the first couple episodes of a new season of Sailor Moon. Sure. And there's this thing that they do, and I guess if I, I can't. If you're going to get mad about it, <laughs> you should get mad from R on and not just at this season. But since nothing else is happening, I'm going to single this out. She's she's eternaling and she's doing her thing and she's and she's good staffing and she's booping, booping and the things are coming out. But there's like no song under it because clearly she has not hit the point yet where she's going to do the thing that she does every episode to... Right lovely or stage out or whatever the bad guys right and so instead of writing like an interim piece of music they just do nothing and so she's swinging around it's it's like um it's like when you see like those youtube videos where it's like a dance number or something but they've taken all the uh the backing track out yeah it's just like the sound of squeaking shoes on the floor as people yes yes because she's like bing 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 like there's no Theme or just play the regular Sailor Moon thing. Just do something. Yeah, right. But they're like, a eh, couple episodes, then we then start, we'll lock start that the, in. Yeah, the sequence of her doing the thing that she does every time. Yeah, that's do a good point. Do something in the meantime. I didn't even notice that. But I, I, I do, because it's happened almost every new season since, okay. since the first. Okay. 
that's really, I mean, that's a valid point, and I think that, like, it really takes away from it that they don't have any music there. Like, I, there's 200 of these things. Yeah. This show came, it came out weekly, right? Yeah, it came out weekly. Yeah. yeah, all right. So it's a weekly show. Like, I get that there's a lot that goes into it. These people are already underpaid and, like, spend 80 hours in the studio and, like, asleep under their desks. Like, I get that it's tough, but just have some plan Yeah. to, to bridge the gap between the thing that's easy and repeatable we all laugh how it's like, oh, we're a little short this week. Everybody transform. Yeah. Like, but, you know, when you're not doing that, you got to have something else. Yes. Otherwise, it looks like you don't care about this. Right. I mean, in addition to everything else that makes it seem like you don't care about it, <laughs> about it at all, this part definitely seems like you don't care about it. Yeah. Uh, it's creepy that Nihilinia is able to possess or hypnotize so many people. And is she doing, is that what she's doing? It seems like it, right? She wants revenge on Sailor Moon. What you That's do is you true. grab her boyfriend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, at this point, you see that pink goblin in your nightmare. So you're not going after that one. That didn't work. <laughs> but we can get this man. We can do this, right? Yeah. Is the horse around? Not here. Okay, good. I'm good. I, I get this guy and then, you know. If you want him back, meet me at the top of the Statue of Liberty or whatever the plan is, right? Right. Is there a plan? What happened to the the, the face and the curtain, the northern lights? I had this whole uh, great, Simpsons great bit I was going to use every episode. <laughs> that just, boom, gone, disappeared. That's a good point. There is no plan here. The plan is mm, keep Stretch stretching it out until <laughs> we get to the, to the manga material. Yeah. I... This episode hate that. is is. Really- I feel like Chibiusa. I feel like the show is talking down to me. Yeah, yeah. You know? This episode like, in particular. People com- I've already look. I- I'm going to repeat everything that I said last week too. People complain about filler, but is it filler or is it content? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If Goku and Piccolo go get driver's licenses, yes, that has nothing to do with fighting <laughs> Majin Buu, but. It, that could be a fun half hour of television. Sure. And it's not even giving us that. No. That you could spend these three episodes easing them into their high school experience. You could introduce some new characters. They're never going to do that. Uh, you know, or they could be like, oh, these assignments are tough. Or whatever it is. They're, they're literally in a holding pattern. And yeah. they think that we won't notice. That's insulting. It is insulting. I'm insulted by this show. I am too. I mean, this this episode... Like you said, it just repeats the everything, all the beats from the it's first two literally episodes. literally the exact thing. And then there's a couple parts where the girls are like, oh, I think mirrors have something to do with this. They like try to yeah. manufacture these mock epiphanies that they're having. And it's like, I think it's anybody would just look guys. around and see. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> it's... Creepy that Mamo bought all those mirrors and put them around his apartment, too. Like, it's just, like, it seems like something, like, serial killer or something like that. Like, it's just, it's weird. It, yeah. And, I mean, he has a lot of money, so I guess he wanted to look inside a mirror so bad, he decided he was going to buy all the mirrors. That's something that nobody ever really deals with, is, like, after you're possessed. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and you come back to your apartment. And you have all that stuff that you bought while you were possessed. Yeah. They never de- deal with that. No, they don't. In the, thing, in the thing where the where the girl's like, oh, she shows up, you know, and she's like, oh, in a mini skirt, And like, oh, look out. Yeah, you know? right. And then somehow they, you know, the dark mercury situation, <laughs> situation, right? Yes. What am I going to do with the, all these Avril Lavigne ties that I bought? <laughs> 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 I have all these like uh, ripped Oxford shirts and like... Uh, <laughs> Uh, plaid skirts with you know? safety pins in them. Yeah, you just go to the dumpster behind Ami's building. It's just a bunch of like <laughs> it's like it's like a hot topic in there. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, uh, that's the un, unspoken cost of these situations. Yes. <laughs> um, it's almost as if they were like we wrote Mamoru out of the finale of Supers, basically. Yeah. So, and, but we didn't want him to feel left out, and so now we're going to make him a, a critical part of this time-wasting filler thing at the beginning of stars where it's like, 
Oh, he's kidnapped. Oh, boy. And he's a little bit evil. We've done all of this already. We have. Several times. Yes. Is it... Plus, what is the show saying? All right, let's let's get into it. Issue one. What is the show saying in that your boyfriend is going to get mean and he's going to smack you around sometimes, but that's just an ancient evil possessing him? Yeah, that's not cool. What kind of message is that sending? That's not a good message. Right. Um, and it's not okay for your boyfriend to smack you around. No. It, when that happens, Makoto should just grab one of the biggest mirrors and just, like, put it around him. Like, <laughs> smash, you know? Be wearing one of those things. I agree. I agree. I don't know why... Yeah, so we're saying that because he's possessed, it's not really him. Is that what we're trying to say? I Look, this is, like, the third or fourth time that he's, like, assaulted her because of evil. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's like, I know it's a trope, but why is it a trope? And why does it so- show up so much in this show? Great question. I I don't know. The like, girls trying... have never attacked each other. No, they never have. And sometimes they've been, you know, confused or I guess they've never really been possessed or whatever. But like. What does it say about Memoru that he gets possessed and kidnapped all the time? It doesn't say anything about his character. It, it It's about the. Proximity to Sailor Moon? <clears throat> no, it's about the position of these characters. There are the five girls. They are the heroes. Yeah. There's the boyfriend character. So remember, he's just a bit of ink and badly written words, right? Right. Why do does why is why does a, a writer and a producer on an anime show think that this is a good idea to keep doing? Right. Yeah. He doesn't say anything about his yeah. character. We always like we have to go. Oh, my head cannon is. We like to like treat all this like it's real. I'm not interested in that right now. I'm interested in like looking at it from the outside and saying, why do we keep writing things like that? Because we don't even question it at this point, but I'm questioning it. Why does that happen? We've talked about how a lot of the things that the characters do in this show are um, commentaries uh, or kind of um, stand-ins or metaphors for the development of, you know, a young girl into being a young woman yeah and some of the things that some of the <laughs> some of the crazy you know race car monsters that, <laughs> that Usagi has had to fight uh kind of represent like kind of steps that you go through emotionally you know or socially sure but like <laughs> why does her boyfriend keep smacking her around yeah it doesn't make any sense it's troubling it's it is troubling it might be the fact and this is troubling and i don't like this idea that maybe this is a very trad show. I don't like that idea either. Because ultimately his, sure, there is female empowerment and the girls are getting it done. And they're also doing it for themselves mm-hmm. and they'd be shopping. Oh my gosh. But his love is so important to her and she can't do it without him. And she's like in a glass case of emotion. Uh, and I think that that's like, really important and i think that they do that because they're like young girls are watching this show and young girls you know are playing mystery date and they're like oh so dreamy they're gonna they're gonna identify with this yeah but they're gonna identify with that anyway they're gonna be playing mystery date no matter what anime they're watching Mm -hmm. so why not give them a little more to aspire to anybody ever think about the fact that like it's queen serenity it's not king mamoru no he's the royal consort Yes. She rules that kingdom. Yes. It's her kingdom. This is not, this could be a lot more feminist than it is. It could be. Yeah. And probably should be. And so I don't like the fact that like every time he turns evil, he just, you know, smacks her and uh, she's like, oh, (laughs) she just smacked me. Yeah. I don't like it either. You know, she's got superpowers. Just smack him, smack him back. Yeah. Right. What good is that stick if you can't block a, somebody trying to smack her? I know that there are a lot of folks who don't like Mamoru and Usagi's relationship um, in the show. And I know that, like, part of it is, like, sometimes he gets mean. or he Like, at the beginning, when they first met each other, he was, like, mean to her. And That's just, like, meet cute stuff, though. It is. It is. But not everybody sees it that way. It is it is weird that he does a full 180, because he's, like, kind of a haughty prick. Yeah, he is. And now he's just, he's nice, but he's also kind of like, 
okay, dumb dumb, I love you. Do you know yeah, what I mean? right. I feel like they're very. I give it a year. Do you know what I mean? She graduates. <laughs> there's no way. Uh, they're very uneven in this kind of relationship. Yeah, and like. She doesn't have to be a rocket scientist. You know what I mean? I like I don't care how smart she is. Right. But like the the kind of emotional the kind of knowledge of the awareness of the need for emotional fulfillment that you require that people require to have a successful relationship. Being a superhero has taught her nothing about that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Right. Like, she's just like, we're going to get married. I love my mom. Oh, blah, blah, blah. It's a very unsophisticated. It's romantic, but it's an unsophisticated look at relationships. Yeah. Whereas he's just like, we don't We don't really know. We don't really we don't get a look really inside know. of his head. We know he doesn't like dentist office, uh, offices. We know that. Yeah, right. But he's like more or less just been like, oh, I love Usagi. Yeah, she's the one I want to be with. Right. And, we don't see we don't any need... vulnerability from him. No, we don't, we don't see anything see deeper. Emotional nakedness from him. Yeah. And we've had plenty of opportunities too. Yes. Because he's died in her arms a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh, been possessed by stuff and he's always, uh, you know, throwing roses around. So it's just like, how much are you going to ask out of a, a child's anime? But um, a lot. The answer is a lot. Yeah. And from what I understand, I can't believe that I'm doing this. But in the manga, oh my gosh, we might get some of that a little bit. Some of the emotional yes, complexity might be uh, more. Yeah, yeah. He's more a part of the the team, if you will, in the manga, and he's more integral to the plot than I think he is, is it in the anime. Integral or is it integral? Integral. Sorry. No, I mean I'm asking. I think it's integral. Okay. Yeah, I said it wrong. Um, it could be integral. <laughs> I don't know. That's the European version. Okay. <laughs> it's like aluminium. Yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. You guys just walk around talking <laughs> like that, huh? All of you relax. This is a matter of inconvenient timing, that's all. Rebooting the podcast was inevitable. This is simply the beginning. I thought I told all of you I want broadcast silence until further. Ooh, I'm very sorry, Cal. I didn't get that message. Maybe you should have put it on Twitter. I figured since you were relaunching the Just Enough Trope podcast, you might be a little lonely, so I decided to be your co-host. Uh, that's very kind of you. I assume you're our mysterious podcaster. You're most troublesome for a Sailor Moon fan. <clears throat> Sorry, Cal. Wrong guess. Would you like to go for an all-new show where the hosts haven't really changed? Who are you, then? Just a fly in the ointment, Cal. The die in the hard. The moon in the lighting. She's talking about the rebooted Just Enough trope, where we'll dive deep into the pop culture elements that make up your favorite movies, TV shows, comics, and video games. See if she's lying about moonlighting and find out if Bruno has returned. No, no, no. Respect. Yourself. Miss Mystery Guest, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Unless you want to sing a duet with me. Uh, no, I'm afraid not. But you have me at a loss. You know my name, but who are you? Just another podcast host who saw too many movies as a child? Another orphan of a bankrupt culture who thinks she's John McClane? Corbin Dallas? A crooning Alcapop pitchman? I was always kind of partial to Seagram's golden wine cooler, actually. It's wet and it's dry! Do you really think you have a chance with this new show, Ms. Co-host? yippee ki -yay, mother cooler. Just Enough Trope, 40 stories of sheer pop culture deconstruction. Available everywhere you listen to your favorite shows. Do I sound like I'm ordering a podcast? Today for Kuro Kuro Miru, or Curiously Looking Around, where we talk about elements of Japanese culture within the episode, we're going to talk about Albert Einstein's visit to Japan. Whoa! Yeah. Oh! So, <laughs> what? Uh, pre-1945, right? Yes, yes okay. it's pre-1945. Right. Probably a little tough to get in there a couple years after. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know what you're, I know what you're saying. I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you think, uh, I think Oppenheimer just opened in Japan recently. Does, is that right? Yeah. They're going to be disappointed. In the movie? Yeah. Because <laughs> you were? Yes. I kind of was too. Uh, oh boy, people love that movie. You should be careful. But, uh. 
well, how do you what do you even think it's like yeah tell us more great great well and i mean i want to hear about this guy you, you where do you get about... all the good ideas that he had <laughs> i mean you like you you spend all this time talking about the bomb building the bomb and you don't show any japanese people at all and you have one scene that's kind of supposed to symbolize you know your emotions and everything about it yeah it's just like, like hey let's make a story about the life of muhammad Atta, and then we'll just show that would be big in america people are gonna like that yeah right let's uh, have a big opening in new york and uh yeah i can imagine them having mixed feelings about einstein but i bet yeah. you're gonna blow me away by telling me <laughs> they love einstein Got that poster they of him. They do love Einstein. Sticking his tongue out. Yeah. They're like, this guy's great. Yeah. They they do, by and large, love Einstein. Oh, of course they do. Uh, so Ami was reading Einstein's Theory of Relativity. So that's why we're talking about Albert Einstein's visit to Japan today. From November 17th to December 29th, 1922, Albert Einstein and his wife Elsa visited Japan. Their six-week trip, carefully arranged and paid for by the Kaizosha Publishing House, made international headlines. Japan was the most significant stop in the couple's five and a half month tour, which included time, which included time spent in Egypt, Ceylon or Sri Lanka, uh, Hong Kong, and China. After Japan, Einstein visited Palestine and Spain before returning home to Germany. Hmm. Einstein, oh yeah, that's right. He's still living in Germany. Yeah, he was at that time. <clears throat> yeah. Einstein was delighted by the beauty of Japan and the elegance of its culture. The Japanese public was equally in awe of their visitor, greeting him on his arrival to Kobe with, quote, great hubbub, masses of journalists on board the ship, <laughs> half hour interview in this saloon, disembarkation with huge crowds, end quote. Einstein, Einstein was, after all, not just the era's best known scientist, but arguably one of the most well-known people in the world. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, he was, um, you know, he was a celebrity. He was. This guy had a crazy idea. You know what? This, this guy's crazy idea. Check this out. <laughs> I know. It's pretty crazy. And this is, of course, I mean, he had that idea in 1905. Um, but 1922 would have been a couple years after they were able to actually um, uh, test his theory. Was it um, Eddington uh, studied the, the, the eclipse? There was a total eclipse that happened. Okay. And they're able to make measurements, you know, and prove that because one of the um, one of the um, effects that we should see uh, if his theory of relativity was co correct is um, light being bent by the sun. Okay. Which you wouldn't be able to see because of the light of the sun. Sure. Uh, but the ecl eclipse allowed us to see that. Oh yeah, some of these stars are a little farther out than they should be. So. That's cool. Crazy son of a bitch was right. Because <laughs> before that, a lot of people rejected his theory. Okay. Because he told the truth. Shut up. <laughs> uh, and uh, and it was very hotly debated. Like he just had this. Now we just take it for granted. Right. And of course the Japanese would in about 30 years uh, too. But um, but yeah, it was just like, is this right? And there's a lot of people like, no, oh, this isn't right. We're the anti-Einstein League, and we don't think this is true at all. And people okay. are like, okay, well, he's right, whatever. <laughs> uh, throughout his travels, Einstein kept a diary. It was published in English in its entirety for the first time in May 2018 as the Travel Diaries of Albert Einstein, the Far East, Palestine, and Spain, 1922 to 1923. Never intended for publication, it records his thoughts and ideas as they occurred without filter or thought of how they might affect his image. After being transported by sweating rickshaw runners in Salon, <laughs> he said, quote, I was very much ashamed of myself for being complicit in such a despicable treatment of other human beings and couldn't change anything. Like he, he felt bad that he was making this guy run around <laughs> carrying him. I, I know how it feels. Uh, I went, we went to uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Yes. And took one of their, um, I don't know what they're called, bike I don't know what they're called tours. either. They're kind of like rickshaws, but yeah. you sit in the back of a bike and a guy bikes you. Yes. And this is South Carolina in, in like early summer. So it is 
you know, 90% humidity. Yes. It's like 80 degrees out. And this guy is just sweating like a pig, you know? <laughs> But, uh, you know, it was like, well, you know, we paid him to do it. Yeah, so I know. I exactly. feel too bad. <laughs> exactly. Uh, he finds a dinner with, quote, diplomats and other big shots, end quote, at the German embassy in Tokyo, quote, boring and stuffy. Aww. Einstein had an entrenched presumption of the intellectual supremacy of Europeans. Quote, it seems that the Japanese never thought about why it is hotter on their southern islands than in their northern islands, uh, nor do they seem to have become aware that the height of the sun is dependent on the north-south position. Intellectual needs of this nation seem to be weaker than the artistic ones. Natural disposition? Uh, okay. So, so these are those unedited journals. Yes, huh? exactly. Day dumb? Question mark. <laughs> He did have complimentary things to say about the architecture and art of Japan, and he praised the people for their, quote, earnest respect without a trace of cynicism or even skepticism, which is interesting because he was pretty much always skeptical in his own work and everything. Yeah, right. That's so, that's the key to being a scientist. Yes. Hey, maybe God of science, Mr. Scientist guy, maybe you're judging like some people who are just living their lives a little too harshly. I know. I know. How come they not f figure out uh, theory of relativity? <laughs> Dumb country? Question mark. <laughs> I know. And honestly, Japan is shed like he treats Japan like better than other countries he went to. That's kind of like the worst thing. Oh my god! Seen. Yeah. You know. I'm glad we're sticking to Japan. Well, I need to hear some of the rest of them. I I did include some of the rest of them. Oh boy. Uh, Einstein did have several remarks in his diary that are racist. From the Guardian article, quote, Einstein travel diaries reveal shocking xenophobia. That's the article. Um, quote, some might argue that Einstein's views simply reflect the common prejudices of a bygone era. I don't like that exclamation, uh, Zev Rosenkrantz told CNN's Von Berg. There are other views prevalent at the time that were more tolerant. And he's the guy who, Rosenkrantz is the guy who put the diary together, um, he translated it into English. Okay. So, yeah, he, he's like, I think there were more tolerant views at the time. Well, oh boy. you know, feet of clay, right? Yeah. Um, plus, these are like, I'm not saying that. <laughs> these are personal diaries. Yeah. Uh, he's just having thoughts to himself. Uh, maybe they're not the most, uh, you know... Um, progressive right. thoughts that you could have but yeah you know he's just a human being i know i know einstein was perhaps the most racist towards the chinese where the man who famously once described racism racism as a disease of white people describes the chinese as quote industrious filthy obtuse people end quote he also described but he wasn't okay hold on all right, all right hold on first of all great quote don't hear that quote enough second of all uh he wasn't saying he wasn't saying that being Chinese makes you dirty and uncouth or whatever. Maybe was he just saying that like the area that he was in? I don't Possibly. like how they do it up here in Beijing or whatever. Possibly. Okay, I don't know why I'm making excuses for him. <laughs> um, he also described the Chinese as being quote herd like. All right. Well, which is not great. Uh, you're on your own, Einstein. <laughs> um, but. We there, There's good stuff here still. So Einstein had a strong rapport for Japan before his arrival. Quote, the invitation to Tokyo pleased me a great deal, as I have been interested in the people and culture of East Asia for a long time, end quote, he wrote. Um, Kaizo Sha was very interested in turning a visit of one of the world's most respected scientists into one German ambassador called a, quote, commercial, enter commercial enterprise. Besides providing translations of his books, Kaizo Sha agreed to pay Einstein 2,000 euro, which is around um, 110,000 euro in today's currency, or 118,458 USD, for what turned out to be five lectures, six public, eight scientific, and one memorable unplanned talk to students at Kyoto University. So he what got paid. talk about? Um, that talk was about his theory of relativity, like how he came about. Um, he was just on the quad. He was walking around. <laughs> I'm sure he was given a tour Some or something. Like, but then, really? E equals MC squared? I don't think so. And he's like, let me tell you something. <laughs> well, sit down. Well, he's not old yet. But 
<laughs> Why does he talk like he's old? He's he's pretty old. He's just an old soul. <laughs> he's always been old. Yeah. Um, in Japan, thousands packed auditoriums to hear him speak on his theory of relativity for three or four hours at a stretch and remarks arduously translated from German. So they had tran- live translators there translating. So he talks and then, oh, that, boy, that's rough. I guess that's how you had to do it. Yeah. Hey, hey listen. This is the movie right here. Yeah. Where's this movie? We get Ken That's Watanabe on standby for this. Yeah. We'll find a role for him later. And then you just you just make this movie. Who wants to play Einstein? Yeah. Um, Do you ever see? I don't know. There is a there is a movie about Einstein and Eddington. And David Tennant plays Eddington. Okay. And I think Andy Serkis plays Einstein. <laughs> I kind of like that Andy Serkis plays Einstein. His, his greatest role. <laughs> What's relativity precious? No. Uh, <laughs> but here's your movie right here. Yeah. I, I, I feel like, has this, um, listen, listen, H- has this uh, not been a thing for a while? I feel like there used to be a lot of movies where it's like, this white guy... He's he's in another country. It's, it's pretty. He's going around. It's crazy. He doesn't know what this, what this country's all about. <laughs> we don't do those anymore. No, we don't really do those anymore. No, we don't have to because you can actually see a Korean movie. You don't have to see a guy goes to Korea. It's crazy there. Right. And then if you do get it, it's um, I don't, lost in translation, which is like a you know different sort of personal kind of work about these characters that are in Japan. Yes. Um, but something like Graham Greene's The Quiet American, you know, where it's like, oh, Brendan Fraser, does, he doesn't know what to do with all this. <laughs> you don't really get those anymore. No, you don't. Or do you? I don't think you do. No, they're all like Rose Byrne fart comedies or something. <laughs> <laughs> movies, movies are going through a thing right now. They are. But anyway, I think that would be a good movie. You get a guy, play Einstein, a young, hot Einstein. Henry Cavill, for instance. Oh, my God. Buff, he he builds his own computers. Einstein. Did you know that? Yeah, right. <laughs> he figured out relativity while he's painting his Warhammer miniatures. <laughs> and then you go there and it's a little bit of like, oh, what's this? I don't know. It's so, so weird. <laughs> Einstein was warmly welcomed to Japan. Quote, uh, that was the most enthusiastic welcome I have ever received in my life. In fact, I was very well received in the United States as well when I visited there. In Japan, however, I felt the genuine and unflappable sincerity of people more intensely than any other country. I assumed it was because the Japanese respected science. I was delighted and felt extremely happy. Now, in the movie, we flash forward. Mushroom cloud in the background. Oh, my God. Right? Yeah. The, the, the irony, the dramatic irony of that. Yeah. They're like, whoa, this, this guy's so great. We love German stuff for some reason. Nobody knows what, what's up with that. <laughs> right? And yes. then where that would lead. Yeah, I know. Right, we got to cut this out. <laughs> I'm going to write this. Well, and I was reading something else, too. Um, I can't believe this doesn't exist already. I, it should. It, it, it does. should. It's, it's a History Channel movie or something. Yeah. Well, he, like, he like traveled to different cities while he was there. He didn't spend his entire time in Tokyo or Kyoto. Like, he went around. And he went to... Um... Oh, I know Einstein got around. <laughs> Ask Elsa. Okay. Well, I did read something that said he loved the women there. So. Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, man. Um, Einstein's a big weeb. <laughs> um, but he, in his travels, he went to Miyajima, which is um, off the coast of Hiroshima. Yeah. And um, there you go. he was talking about uh, looking at the Tory Gate or what have you. And somebody that I was, in my research, I came across somebody saying, I wonder if when he found out about the, they dropped the bombs, if he thought about the that gate mor- that's not there anymore. The morning of like just looking over at Hiroshima, <laughs> yeah, from the island, and yeah. So, one day into his tour, Einstein looked out a window just before the sun had risen. Below, there were thousands of Japanese people waiting to see if they could catch a glimpse of Einstein. He could only divulge his thoughts to Elsa. Quote, "No living person deserves this kind of reception." End quote. He told her as he described as as described by Einstein's biographer Walter Isaacson in his book Einstein: His Life and Universe. Quote, "I'm afraid we're swindlers. We'll end up in prison yet." End quote. 
<laughs> so we get away with this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Besides visiting all these countries out of curiosity, Einstein's trip was arranged all more as a way of taking himself out of Berlin, where German nationalists had recently assassinated Jewish diplomat and philosopher Walter Rathenau. Yeah, it'd be uh, nice to just get out for a little while. Yeah. Uh, five and a half months he was gone on this trip. Yeah. Uh, the brutality of Rathenau's death, he was killed while sitting in his car on the street and then blown up by a hand grenade. <laughs> Jesus uh, quote, devastated, end quote, Einstein. He and his wife knew that they were now on a, quote, a list, end quote, and needed to leave Germany. Einstein's E equals MC squared formula had led scientists to developments in creating uranium chain reactions. And although it was never his intent to produce an atomic bomb, he without question felt responsibility for their existence. He spoke three words the minute he heard the dreadful news. Woe is me. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I I heard that he um had continued to have correspondence with people in Japan. There was a guy who was a German Japanese translator, native Japanese guy, okay, and like a philosopher uh named uh Seihi Shinohara, and he was a like a pen pal of Einstein's. Okay, and after the bombings, you know, uh. Einstein said, "Like, yeah, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want him to do it. That's not, that's not why I did anything that I did, you know. Right. And I t- tried to tell people not to do it, but I, I just didn't have any control over it. Like he was kind of defensive about it because I, I'd imagine that you'd have to be, you know. Yeah. And I think, go, uh, yeah, what was me? <laughs> kind of sums up the whole thing. It does." There's a Reddit thread that says when Einstein visited Japan, <laughs> he, yeah, I know. This must be just true. Wait, just wait. <laughs> he didn't have any cash or tips, so he wrote two notes and handed them to a bellhop, and he said, one day these will be worth something. They sold in 2017 for $1.56 million. So this is actually true, um, at least to some extent. While staying at Tokyo's Imperial Hotel, either a courier or a bellhop came to the door to make a delivery. The courier and or bellhop either refused a tip or Einstein had no small change, but Einstein wanted to give the message bearer something. So on a piece of hotel stationery, Einstein wrote in German his theory of happiness, quote, a- <laughs> <laughs> smile equals uh, joy squared. Yeah. <laughs> a, a calm and modest life brings more happiness than the pursuit of success combined with constant restlessness, end quote. On a second sheet, he wrote, quote, where there is a will, there is a way, end quote. Supposedly, he also told the bellhop to save the notes. They just might be valuable in the future. In 2017, the note on happiness was auctioned at $1.56 million. The second note was auctioned at $240,000. The seller of the imperial notes is reportedly a grandson of the Japanese bellboy's brother who lives in Germany. Okay. Yeah. Lives in Germany? Yeah. Huh, all right. Interesting, right? And they were bought by Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> Probably. Uh, see, that's this all goes back. So first of all, uh, that sounds a lot like uh, a Picasso story, which is, you know, near the end of his life, or at least in his older years, he didn't carry any money because he would go to a restaurant and they'd go, well, that'll be uh, so many. He's like, one sec. And he'd just like do a p- little Picasso, you know, on the napkin or whatever. <laughs> and they're like, oh, so I, fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's really um, funny. Well, it's a w- one way to get out of uh, having a wallet, I guess. Um, <laughs> but also that 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 is perfect for the movie because this is an Einstein who I know it. The story is framed like, oh, oh gosh, I wish I had something in some marks in my pocket. Yeah, right. But this is an Einstein who is like realizing the power and celebrity that he has. Right? Yes. Yes. He's it like, because who says like, hold on to that? It might be uh, worth something someday. <laughs> Do you know, know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, I'm going to write this movie. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. So, yeah. I mean, that's a fun story. It seems like, it kind of seemed like at first, especially since this was a Reddit thread, that like this wasn't true. <laughs> but there are multiple articles that I found about it. And and I also saw there was somebody who had taken a picture of the two notes. Well, I mean, so. you can, look, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I mean, you can, I suppose, probably look up the the story about, the auction, like the auction right. was real. Right? The auction was real. Yeah. <laughs> and that man, Albert Einstein. 
<laughs> uh, no, I, I mean, I believe that it happened, but it's it's the kind of thing that's like, oh, that's so great. And then also, you know, 20 years later, he's like, oh, boy, what happened to that guy that I gave those notes to? Oh, gosh, come on. I wonder if he's okay. If he's okay. Or if he's a shadow on a wall. Oh, no. Well, kind of seems like. That's a story that ought to be told. Christopher Nolan disagrees with me. It is but then again, Robert Oppenheimer had never gone to Japan, I guess. I don't think so. So he doesn't have any connection. That's so. not true. Well, I just in in the way that like Einstein's like, oh, this is a great place. People a little dumb, but a uh, great, wonderful place <laughs> to be. And then 25 years later. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I right? know. Yeah. It's great, visceral. Great movie. It's That'd an okay movie. movie. Yeah. But the one about Einstein would be a good movie. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I would not compliment Christopher Nolan like that. Okay. All right. Not 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 too impressed. Not too impressed. No. Fine. Okay. See me after class. Um, I don't want to see him. <laughs> okay. Uh no, I think it's fine. I just think that like I've got a much longer rant that we're we're not going to do here, but is this what we're down to? Is this it? When you think about the films of Stanley Kubrick and the way that they are, um, people accuse uh, his films of being um, emotionally distant. Sure. When you think about his films and the connection that you feel to what's happening in the characters and sometimes the, the weird, very dark humor uh-huh. that you get out of some of them. You couldn't have that without emotional investment. That's true. People don't say exactly what they're feeling in his films, but that's called good writing sometimes. Yeah. And so you have that. And so, you know, total masterpieces, whatever. Then you have Christopher Nolan, who's like, I don't know if you know this, but he really likes Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> shocking but his characters are like love is the one power in the universe shut up who cares what are you talking about who cares i feel like they're just so they're just like he's like the thinking man's Zack snyder he yeah. gives you this bombast and a plus apparently all of his movies are about making movies and it's like all right man put put the jurgens down here oh my gosh. Do you know what i'm saying yeah like, we get it you like you like movies uh I don't know if Stanley Kubrick ever had any interviews or, or speeches where he's like, oh, I'm just thinking about movies is just so magical. And I think he just made movies, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, he just made a movie. He didn't talk about how much he loved them. And the thing now is like everybody's a fan of everything and it's ruining culture. <laughs> every re- revival of every show or franchise is like features, you know, I don't mean to pick on Ray because I like Ray, but not, <laughs> sorry, not Sailor Moon Ray, Star Wars Ray. Oh, yeah. But the thing about like The Force Awakens is Ray and Finn, they're Star Wars fans. Yes, they are. Yeah. They're yeah. like, whoa, you're Han Solo and that's Chewbacca. Yeah, exactly. How much for a picture? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yes. in these franchises, it's always like, whoa, you're the, you're the somebody, somebody. Oh man, I love you. Yeah, right. And it's just how long can we do this how long can we go all the way up our own asses yeah you know before there's no more original culture and that's how i feel about christopher nolan's movies (laughs) (laughs) i feel like it's like the same movie there's a guy (laughs) we don't know about him and no no we do we we know we know about him but he maybe he doesn't know about us (laughs) and he's gonna have some problems people aren't gonna listen to him but he's going to just kind of keep doing it. And uh, you, you, you'll, you'll see. He's going he's gonna to figure it out. And maybe a truck's going to flip over an IMAX or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right. I just don't think that that's very sophisticated. It's What's not. the most sophisticated movie you've ever seen? Go. Most sophisticated movie I've ever seen? Yes. Uh, does Barry Lyndon count? Uh, sure. It's pretty sophisticated. Um... Yeah, I agree. I guess I guess um, now I, I'm not sure what I was asking, <laughs> but because you took I was going to say uh, my dinner with Andre or something. Uh, 
but yeah, you took me off guard with your answer. I, I agree. It's uh, incredibly sophisticated. Um, uh, technically. Yeah. You hear the, about like what they went through to, because <laughs> this guy's like, don't you make space movies? You bearded weirdo. Right, right. And he's like, uh, we're only going to use like candles to light all this. And the cinematographer's like, oh, God. <laughs> but they uh, pulled it off. And it is um, complex uh, or sophisticated. Sorry, we're not complex, sophisticated. <laughs> um, morally, and in terms of um, its presentation and development of character, and it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on in the story sometimes. It this, guy, is. this guy goes all over the shop. He does. But yeah, that's. Um, and then the ending is like, oof, oof, what? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good choice. How about you? Oh, my dinner with Andre. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are, they're just trying to, they're just having dinner. They're trying to figure it out. I've never seen my dinner with Andre. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's worth seeing uh, to see, but it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's all right. Okay. Just all right. I think in the uh, the kind of like uh, 1970s uh, New York Woody Allen intellectual set, it was like, you know, the piece de la resistance of, um, uh, you know, sophisticated uh, intellectual film going. Uh, people don't really talk about it <laughs> that much anymore. Uh, most people don't even know what I'm talking about. But uh, didn't they do a, a bit on it? I'm sure there's on community. Pro- yes, probably because Dan Harmon and the people that he hires uh, are all come from that same set uh, that I guess I come from too, where it's like I know that, so I got to make fun of it. I don't understand it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, don't ask any question you can't answer. I guess sophisticated film, the most sophisticated film. I'm gonna keep repeating the question. The most, <laughs> the most sophisticated film. The most sophisticated film. The most sophisticated film. <laughs> um, I I'm so bad at these. Like, what's your favorite color or whatever? It's like this. Look, they're all good. I don't... <laughs> I'm bad on a first date, I guess. <laughs> it's okay if you can't come up with one. Because it's got to be the perfect answer. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's like um, high fidelity. Mm-hmm. Right, he's got top five lists for everything. Yes, you know, yeah. But he's not coming up with those right away. No, he's like going home and he's like got you know strings on the wall and notes and he's like, hey, you know, all right, all right. I'll goes back to the shop the next day. Okay, here's the top five. Yes, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Um, good. boy, Einstein, did he like the sushi? Um. <laughs> Wow, I I think he liked the food. Okay, I don't know if he had. I'm sure he had sushi at some point. You guys got no cold cuts. What's what's going on? <laughs> I he did say it was really hard to sit on the ground. Yeah. So <laughs> there's that. That's but, see that. <laughs> that's such a that's such a human thing. Science God who split the atom and taught us to move faster than light. And he's like, oh, my knees hurt. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's human. <laughs> yeah, it is. Itadakimasu with Usagi. What did Usagi eat in this episode? Usagi asked her mom to make some food for Mamo, and she also... <laughs> that's literally just the concept of food. I know. That's not a food. We've done that before. <laughs> it's food Any was mention mentioned. of food. No, it's like when we see like a confectionery or something like that. She was carrying a bento she, box. She... <laughs> She acknowledged the existence of food. Yeah. It goes in the Ichidaki mask. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> okay, well. Um, she ate ate hand. I know that. That strong pimp hand. Oh, my gosh. She ate a knuckle sandwich. Yeah, you're right. Terrible. So there's that, too. Terrible. <laughs> Bill and Gage, we rate a baddie one to five dark stars, five being the most wicked. It's the dollies again. Nobody's. So. Yep. It's a, it's a, it's a rain out. It's a rain out. Trivia. I do have some trivia. Great. This is the first episode that showed Sealer Saturn without her weapon, the Silence Glaive. Oh, yeah. Does yeah. it like fold up or something? I don't think so. I think that would be weird if it folded Plus, up. Plus, I said teenage, but she's like one year older than she'd be She's like her. a tween. Yeah. Yeah. 
So a glaive is already a weapon that is taller than a man. Yes. So how is like a three and a half foot kid going to use this thing? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> Saturn magic power. That's yeah, how. that's right. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so very careful. Whoa. <laughs> All the other sentry have like little nicks and cuts on oh their arms God. and legs. They're like, no, you're, do you're doing fine. <laughs> Try again. Uh, technically, both Uranus and Neptune's new attacks, Space Sword Blaster and Submarine Reflection, had already appeared in the anime in the Supers movie, which aired three months before Sailor Stars. That makes it even worse because... They got kind of an introduction in the movie. They did. And they're just kind of like farted out here. Yes. So I agree. again, it's like it doesn't where does the movie I know fit? And come on, Sailor Moon, you're slipping I, I know. here. Come they, on. Um it's I mean, even with this trivia, they're like it's when exactly the film t events take place is unclear. <sighs> yeah. So All right. um Ito Asanamu made his first and only anime appearance in this episode, and although he wasn't named, his name appeared in the credits. This is the young man who came to Mamo's apartment looking for him. He is a character in the manga. It's not George. No, it's, it's not George. It, it's just, oh, he was in the manga. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But this is the one and only time we see him. Why get an entirely new voice actor? Just have the guy who plays Mamoru go, you know, just change his voice a little bit or something. You know, do double duty. Yeah, I agree. That do would make more sense. Do they do that in, in anime? They do that in American cartoons they all do. the time. Like the voice actress who plays Luna also. Oh plays no, Queen I know, Barrel. but like, right? But like, she's you know, a, a star. She's like a major player. Yeah. Um, you'll see that all like in uh, in Justice League. Uh, you're, you're like that henchman sounds like Phil Lamar to me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Or like on the old uh, Super Friends show, it's like any female bad guy is just Wonder Woman with a cold. It's just clearly the same voice actress. They were not going to hire anybody else. Just go ahead, do it. That's okay, though. They hire like one guy. Maybe they're thinking like, oh, this guy's he's going he's gonna to be a big thing. He's going to show up again. It's like, no, nope, your agent lied. He's <laughs> you're going to say two things. One of them's not going to make any sense. Pass two. And then you're gone. Um, this was the last time Sailor Neptune used su submarine reflection. So it's <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, this was the last appearance of the Clyde moon scope. Um, and when the inner senshi were struggling to get the elevator open, super sailor moon's skirt was sli slightly longer. Oh, than it usually is. Okay. Yeah. Just an animation inconsistency. Didn't notice. Yeah. I didn't either. Uh, now we're up to our wrap up. I like that Mako knocks the mirror out of Usagi's hand because she senses something evil from it. I also like that Mako offers her mirror as a replacement for the broken one. I like that Usagi is making connections and noticing that the girl had gold in her eyes, just like Mamo. It's weird that Mamo says, poor thing, as he caresses a broken mirror. Uh, I like how Usagi realizes the shadow in the mirrors is Nihilenia. It's really creepy how Nihilenia grabs Mamo from inside the mirror and drags him inside. I, this episode, there's not a whole lot new that happens. And um, I was kind of disappointed by that. So I'm going to give it two out of five roses. Two out of five roses. Yeah. A, a one for you. Your twos are ones. My twos are ones. Uh, I'm going to give it a one. Okay. Uh, I've had enough. And uh, maybe we need to hit the bottom before we can start. Uh, heading back up uh this has happened in the past where i've said that's enough <laughs> and i gave a bad review and uh either i'm anticipating something or it's responding to me but then things start climbing again so i figure we need the punishment uh we need i i want them to i want to look back i've said this before i want to look back on this and know that this is the point where i said this far, no further. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is a one. Come on, guys. You are rehashing bad stuff. It would be maybe a different question if you're rehashing good stuff. But you are throwing bad after bad. This is almost the exact same episode as the last episode. Yeah. If you don't have any ideas, call me. I've got some. 
steal something from the manga. I don't know. Bring the vampires back. Do anything. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah. Why are you doing this? And also, why didn't Chibi Usa go back to the future? She doesn't. She's not doing anything. I don't know. Shut up, Chibi Usa. You're not the main character anymore. <laughs> it's the Sailor Moon show. You know, like, I, we've had a good time with Chibi Usa. But yes. if she's just hanging around to hang around like the cats. Then just send her back to the future. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. She doesn't really do anything in this. So I was kind of disappointed by that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. And it's weird because some of the animation has been actually really good. I think it's still strong. But there are parts that are like, okay, you They're guys a just sort of put that together. Wobbly. There's a lot of flashes to previous episodes, which is reused animation. Sure. And so you see them kind of cutting around there. We talked about the music thing. Um, what, what's going on? You know, yeah. fun's fun, but it's it's time to turn this thing around. So um, I'm going to have to, th- with it's with a heavy heart that I give this a one. I understand. But I, you have left me with no choice. Yes. See me after class. <laughs> uh, my English title is Help, Boyfriend Again Kidnapped. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I saw a, a thing for that on a telephone pole. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, this girl, she's always losing her boyfriend. Uh, mine is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, my title is Further Reflection. There you go. Next episode, we are talking about episode number 170, Umei no Ichiya, Seira Senshi no Kunan in Japanese, and the English translation, Night of Destiny, The Sailor Guardian's Ordeals. <laughs> the audience's ordeals. <laughs> All right, a night of destiny. Yes. Tonight only. <laughs> uh, okay, great. <laughs> That's a very vague title. It's very vague. For a show that is explicitly in <laughs> a goodbye earth. Uh, <laughs> usually has no trouble telling you what's going to happen. So I wonder what that means. After all this time, the curveballs still come. Yeah. It's a little bit amazing. But I guess we'll look forward to hopefully something new in the future. Yes. We always look forward to meeting new listeners. And if you want to join our Discord and do just that, you can. There's a link in the show notes. It is discord.com forward slash blah, 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 blah. I don't know. It's not a word. It's a bunch of letters and numbers. But uh, the link is in the show notes. So click on that if you want to join us and talk about all kinds of pop culture topics. Uh, we are waiting to meet you. And also, if you want to contribute to the show, there's two ways that I can think of that you can do that. You can go to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Sailor Noob, and join our Senchi team today. We have uh, lots of things on offer on the Patreon, extra podcasts, extra content, and uh, good times and hangouts and, and all kinds of things. So you can find that at patreon.com forward slash Sailor Noob. And if you don't want to invest that far into the show, uh, I understand, uh, you know, things are the way they are. But go to coffee, ko-fi.com forward slash Just Enough Trope. And if you think we're doing a good job, you can put a little money in the coffee jar there just to say, hey, keep up the good work. I see you. <laughs> I see you, Sailor Noob. I see you suffering the first part of Sailor Stars. Yes. Which we lied to you and said was going to be good. <laughs> but you know, it is the way it is. <laughs> ah. Oh my God. Well, that's our show for this week. And the name of the moon will be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor News. I'm the Jolene. <laughs>